It's a great honor and pleasure to be here in Ghana in this Africa Convention. Apostle Peter says in one of his letters. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. But the worship of God must continue. Nothing can stop the word of God. Amen to that? Nothing can stop the word of God. We have no, no power. We cannot use the microphones. But this is the power of God. And we will continue to hear the word of God. Can you hear me over there? Is this the power of God? Yes. The Bible says that we are one nation. Probably we're from different countries. Around 16 or 17 countries in Africa, right here. Some from United States, America, Australia, Australia, Canada, Canada, Jamaica, Jamaica, Germany. Germany. I grew up in Mexico. Mexico. It doesn't matter. We are one nation under God. We are one nation under God. Probably where I coming from. Where I coming from? Yeah, yeah, I don't know how to dance like you. He can teach you. You can teach me. That's fine. I don't know how to move like you. I don't sing like you. Or I sing or I clap. I cannot do both. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're still one body. One nation. Under God Almighty. But the Bible says that there's a purpose to be one body. There's a purpose to be one holy nation. It's to proclaim to proclaim the, the works of Jesus Christ. That's the, the best thing for the church. We are called from Jesus Christ to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's the first lecture. We are called to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the reason we are one nation. And this is words from Apostle Peter. But Peter, he understands this from Jesus Christ. The book of Mark, in chapter 1, verse 1, it says like this, the beginning of the gospel 
of Jesus Christ. These are the first words of the book of Mark. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The, the whole book of Mark is talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And one of the first words is in verse 14. And he says to this, Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God, and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God it's at hand. Repent. And believe in the gospel. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ that he was preaching in Galilee. And this is the same message today for the church. The only reason we are one nation is to proclaim the same. Repent because the kingdom of God is near, is with us. One of the first things that I'm going to close the Bible. One of the first things that Jesus did was to call some fishermen. They were fishers. Jesus was walking around the Sea of Galilee. He was already preaching the gospel. He was calling the people to repent from their sins. Because we know according to the Bible, the wages of sin is that and you who that's the reason it's important to Jesus to proclaim the people to repent. That's part of the gospel. And he saw Peter. And his brother. They were cleaning. After working on the Sea of Galilee. And the only thing. That Jesus yes, told them is follow me. Follow me. And the Bible says that immediately they left what they were doing. So this is the first thing. Every time that Jesus calls, he's looking for an answer. The answer is yes or no. If you are here, it's because you have said yes to the call of Jesus Christ. But there's more people outside that they haven't answered the call. That's why we, can, we need to continue proclaiming the gospel. And not only Peter, but other more. They, lay, they left everything to follow Jesus Christ. We were on the march yesterday. Remember the march? It was good, right? Did you get tired? Yeah. That was the point. When we are in the business of Jesus Christ, we will get tired. You were looking for water on the road, right? 
It's because you left the water here. Anyone needs to let something. But yesterday on the march, I saw one little girl with this message. There was a little girl walking four miles more or less around two hours with this sign on his on his hand. This is the sign. It's Christ. It is Christ. And yes, Christ. Yesterday. Yes, Today. And forevermore. Hallelujah. Hebrews 13. Hebrews. Hebrews. The book of Hebrews. Hebrews. Yeah. It is Christ. When Jesus called, he's calling today, and the call remains until he comes. That's the call. And only of is forevermore. So this is the first thing we have to remember. It's Christ who is making the call. It's not your mother. It's not your father. Not your boss. Not the pastor. It's just Jesus Christ. When you say no, you're saying no to Jesus. But when you're saying yes, you're saying yes to the King of Kings. Jesus Christ. We are in the best business. In the business of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That was the first thing I want to mention. Jesus did a lot of things. He did a lot of healings. Miracles. Cast out demons. But one of the reasons he called the disciples. It's in Mark chapter 3. Can you look at it? Mark 3. And he said. Verse 13. And he went up on the mountain and called him and called to him those who him desire. And they came to him and he appointed twelve whom he also named apostles and this is the reason this is the reason why he called twelve so that they might be with him that's the first thing so that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach that's the first two things that he made 12 disciples two reasons to be with Jesus and to send them out to preach. This is the call to, from Jesus Christ to the gospel. To the great commission. And you can see that Jesus never, never left his disciples alone. So remember those two things. He called you to be with you. But also he called you to send us out to preach. That's the only thing that we need to remember this morning. You belong to God. 
But also you have a work to do. He spoke to others about the gospel of Jesus. Later, on the book of Mark, <laughs> on chapter 6, chapter 6, verse 7, and he called the twelve and began to send them away two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. That was the reason he sent them to preach. But now Jesus is not going with them. It's two by two. He made six groups of the twelve disciples and send them out to preach. And you can see later that they went they did the work. They were too happy. But they didn't have time to eat. They were working so hard preaching the gospel. They didn't have time to eat. So the next thing that you see on the chapter 6 is the miracle when Jesus fed the 5,000 men and the only reason this is happening because at the beginning of the miracle Jesus wants to spend some time with the disciples Jesus wants to spend some time because that's one of the reasons he, he said, I have 12 disciples to be with them. And he told them, Let's go to a mountain, to a quiet place. Let's be together. Only us, Jesus and the 12, they have already worked on the gospel. We can say that they deserve to rest. But something happened. A lot of people from the nations around. They find out that Jesus was on the mountain with his disciples. They follow them. And we know the number of the people. They were 5,000 men. Not including children and women. So you can imagine the number. The number can be more than 10,000. It's a large crowd. It's too many people trying to look for Jesus. But the reason they are on the mountain. They went to rest to the mountain. They wanted to spend, spend some time alone with Jesus. But they're not on vacations. They're not on vacations. They're supposed to preach the gospel. When do we preach the gospel? The answer is always where is the opportunity we care about the Jesus Christ work always that we have the opportunity even though you are on vacations when Jesus saw the large crowd he left the disciples and started working with the large crowd. And the disciples were on the other side doing nothing. 
They're supposed to help Jesus. But is Jesus working alone again? Imagine the disciples. They were thinking that they went to the mountain to have a small vacation with Jesus. But Jesus is working again. How this is happening? Well, because the, the message was preach the gospel. Jesus never said, Jesus never said when to stop. The church of God never stops preaching the gospel. Church in Africa will never stop preaching the gospel. We were called of Jesus to preach the Great Commission every day. And then, this large crowd, they are hungry now. And we know the story. The disciples, they already worked. They already went two by two to the to different places to preach. They think that they're done doing the work. That's why one of the disciples going to Jesus. And they say to Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Send them out. Send them to their houses. Because we don't have food. How suppose are we going to feed more than 5,000 men? Well, they just forgot that they're in front of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the one who can make all miracles happen. Hallelujah. They want to quit the job. They want the easy exit. Jesus, send them out. We're just here to preach. But Jesus says no. Jesus, in book of Mark chapter 6, Say a command to the disciples. And Jesus said to the disciples, Go and find out. Go and find out how much food do we have. And they were looking for food. They were asking, do you have food? Do you have food? Do you have... Anyone has something to eat? They probably they don't know. But this word that they're doing, looking for food, is part of the Great Commission. So Jesus said, that, go look for food. And the book of John says that they found a little boy. With five breads. And two small fishes. And they said. And they, they don't have faith. What is this? This is not enough to feed more than 5,000 people. They're not going by faith. But Jesus is teaching them a lesson. Remember, the, the two things that Jesus called them was number one, to be with them. And number two, send them out to preach. So they arrive in the mountain and Jesus is with them. And when they send them out to look into the large crowd, they're doing the Great Commission because Jesus takes care of the people. The Bible says that Jesus was, was moved by compassion. If we want to do the Great Commission, we must have compassion for the people. Probably we 
don't have all the resources. Church, we don't have all the money of the world. We don't have all the food. We don't have all the water. But we have God that owns everything. God is the one that provides everything to happen. If we only have five bread, that's good. Because we're going to place it. We're going to place it in the hands of Jesus Christ. And it's just a matter to open his eyes Talk to his father and then the miracle is right there. And now the disciples, they didn't want to work. They wanted to rest in the mountain with Jesus. Now, after Jesus is taking food from one place, imagine that. Jesus is right there taking food, more food, more food, more food. How much time? We are around 300, 400 more or less, right? Today? And it took us like an hour, an hour and a half to be in line for the food. Imagine 10,000 people. 15,000 people. And the people is from here to probably, uh, I don't know, 500 meters away. And Jesus told to Peter. Peter, this is the food. Take it to the family that is over there. Now Peter is working. He's doing the Great Commission. Great Commission, yes, he's about to preach the gospel. But also he's to taking care of the needs of the people. Be right there for them. And they took care of it. They have plenty of food. Even the disciples, and you know the story, even the disciples got food for them. But the next story that you see after the miracle of the 5,000 is Jesus sent them through, Gal through the Sea of Galilee in a boat. And Jesus has remained in the mountain praying for them. So you have the you have the twelve disciples with the basket of food walking into the boat to go into the Sea of Galilee, but now alone Jesus is in the mountain. And in any instance. They have a bad weather. Big winds. They're moving the boat. They have the food in their hands. But the boat is moving. Jesus is in the mountain praying for them. And now they're afraid. And now it's around 3 in the morning. And Jesus is still in the mountain praying for them. And Jesus knows everything. He knows everything. And he knows that his disciples are in fear in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. So, let me ask you. If one of your family members if one of your family members are in danger what do you do? do you continue to pray? or you go around to help them? what do you do? if one of your sons is on troubles do you run to help them? or you just walk slowly? if you saw your, your son is beaten by another guy or is in trouble you will go in a hurry to help him but you know what Jesus did? 
He walked down the mountain. He knew that his disciples were in the middle of the sea. And the Bible says that Jesus is start walking in top of the water. Why Jesus is not in a hurry? Yes, if, if the disciples are almost uh, they're afraid to death. Why Jesus is walking? Can can Jesus can Jesus run? Of course. Can Jesus be with them in one instant? Of course. Can Jesus pray from the mountain to stop the winds and everything being peace? Yes. So why Jesus is walking slowly towards them? Because he made a promise. He made a promise in Mark 3. When he was on the mountain, he called the twelve. And one of the reasons is to be with them. Sometimes you are all the hour in the fields doing the work. And you feel alone. You feel troubles. But don't worry. Sometimes appears that Jesus is not around. But let me tell you this verse. Jesus is praying for you. And Jesus will not never, never leave you alone. Because when you are doing the great commission for him, he will take care of you. It doesn't matter how trouble are. So that was one of the reasons. And I just want to move a little bit. You know that in the Gospels, Jesus is always praying. And preaching. And he uses three sides, basically. He goes into the synagogues. What they say, Shadan. He go into the houses, but also he go into the streets. The church of God, the church of God is the church that the world is needing. We are a great church. With a great doctrine. People outside are waiting for us. We need to follow the Jesus example. And the temple. And the houses. And the streets. We need to preach in the temple and the houses and the streets. We need to be outside. We just need to, to be in action to move forward. The years pass after Jesus called his disciples. And it was about the time to, to him to be crucified. And you know that his disciples, especially Peter, denied him three times. During the trial, Peter denied Jesus Three times. Even when Peter said, I will not deny you, Jesus. I will die for you. Peter was ready to die for Jesus. But when he saw that he was that Jesus was getting crucified. Peter run away. Peter run away. And Jesus was crucified. He was crucified on the cross and he was alone. 
John was there, some women were there, but the rest of the disciples they were afraid, hidden in a house. And you can see after after that that Peter and some of the disciples in chapter 20 of the book of John. That now they went back to fish. They went, they went back to fishing. Remember at the beginning Jesus said, You will be no longer fishermen. I will make you a new feature of man. And now, after Jesus is on the cross, some of the disciples are disappointed. And they went back to his old or previous job. What happened? What happened? Jesus was wrong that he should be with them every day? No, Jesus is never wrong. Church, you and me are the ones who get disappointed sometimes. Sometimes we suffer some things at church, home, family, work, whatever, and we get disappointed. And we told God, God, I don't want to continue doing this. It's too hard. Jesus, I don't want to follow you anymore. There's some uh, much problems in the church. The streets are so hard. And we don't want to continue. But the call is from Jesus. Jesus is the one that calls us. And he will remain faithful to his call. Even there's some time that we, you and me, you don't want to continue. So two things that I want to say. When Jesus resurrected, yes, Christ, sorry for that, we'll no. the first person that went to the tomb, now, uh, sorry, the lady, can I say? there was the woman, now, you not the disciples, now, she has, she has one. but Jesus says to one of the women, yes, he said, tell my, my brothers, my disciples, tell them that we're going to meet back in Galilee, in the mountain, they know where. You can see that in Matthew 28. Jesus told one of the women, Tell my disciples that I will meet them in Galilee. Why? They're in Jerusalem. It, will, it wouldn't be easier to meet with Jesus in Jerusalem. There. Everybody's there. But Jesus said, No, I don't want to meet you here in Jerusalem. We will meet over there in Galilee. In the mountain. What mountain? Well, we will see that in a minute. But just remember, they have to walk from Jerusalem all the way to the north to Galilee just to meet the resurrected Jesus Christ. And if Jesus, and if Jesus won them in Galilee is for a reason. And we, and we will see and we will see it in a minute. But before that, going back to the story of John and other six disciples uh, fishing in the sea over there. They're not preaching the gospel anymore. They're not killing people. They're not casting out demons. They're not praying. They're fishing. Appears that appears that they quit the call. But Jesus has something else on mind. Chapter 20, book of John. It says that in the morning, 
In the morning, when the disciples are fishing, Jesus is doing something different. Jesus is not fishing. Jesus, he already have a fish. And the Bible says that he's doing breakfast for them. He's doing breakfast. And when they find out that is Jesus that is calling them again, Peter, get out from the boat because John told them, Peter, 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 Peter is the master over there. Over there, Peter. And Peter got out from the boat and started walking toward Jesus without his entire clothes. Peter, what the disciple of San Jesus said, Cree, 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 and Macra, and Frana. Imagine this scene. Peter was quitting the call of Jesus Christ to preach the gospel. He's going back to his old job. But Jesus is not quitting on him. He's preparing breakfast. Why? Why Jesus is doing that? Because he promised. In Mark 3, he make a promise. Peter, disciples, I'm calling you to be with you always. That's the, that's the greatest call of all. Probably you have good jobs. But the best job that we can have is work for the God Almighty. That's the best call that we can have. So now why? Before we end, why? Why Jesus told the disciples to go back to Galilee? I didn't see Anna used to catch us on one side of You want to see it? Open your Bible. Look, Matthew 28, verse 16. Now the 11 disciples, Matthew 28, 16. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. We don't have the name of the mountain. There's a lot of mountains in Galilee. But probably we will find which one. Remember, they're in Jerusalem. But Jesus didn't want to meet with them in Jerusalem. So there must be something good about this mountain in Galilee. There must be something special about this mountain. Verse 17. And when they saw him, they what? They worshipped him. Hallelujah. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. They walked all the way from Jerusalem to Galilee. They don't know what to expect. They don't know what to expect. They're climbing the mountain. Jesus is in the top of the mountain. And when they saw him, they start to worship him. Because Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is the Savior. That's the message of the great commission. Repent. Yes, they worship Jesus because, because they know that he deserves all worship. Remember the first call. On the first call, most of the disciples, all the disciples, they left something. 
They left their works. They left their families. They left a lot of things. Money. They left everything. But they need to continue to left something. Probably you and me. Probably you and me, when we accept the first call of Jesus Christ, you left something. You left a job to, to live, I mean, to follow Jesus. You left a family because they didn't believe in Jesus and you decide to follow Jesus. But we're here. We're in Ghana in 2018. And, and Jesus is still calling us to leave something. Some of you, some of you are thinking if you need to leave your job to do more work for Jesus. If you leave a job, you will lose money. But if you follow Jesus, you will gain eternal life. And that much better. What I'm saying is that all of us, we need to surrender something to Jesus. Yesterday, you have a hymn note right here, right? You have a song of hymns. Can you stand up? Yes, I want you. Can you help me with a song before we finish? Can you help me with a, with a hymn? I surrender all. Do you know that hymn? Can you help me? Church, stand up and let's let's sing to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Don't mind the voice. <laughs> this is the hymn. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. All to Jesus I surrender. All to Jesus I surrender.